Welcome to my show. My name is Marcel Johnson, and this is A Freedom Experience. First of all, I'm excited that you're here, bro. Excited to be and here, I'm bro. excited, you know what I'm saying, for them to get to know you. But sure. what's up, family? So y'all already know the deal. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Yes, sir. And I just want to tell you thank you because I truly do appreciate everything that y'all say to me behind the scenes when y'all message me and stuff. I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate y'all just coming along for the journey. Oh, yeah, my name is Marcel Johnson, if you didn't know that. Okay, let's get into this get interview, into man. What's up, yeah, bro? what's up, bro? Yeah, thank you for sliding, Thanks bro. Thanks for having me, bro. It's a pleasure to be on here, bro. For sure. So, this is Jabril, a.k.a. Jibs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Artist, innovator, entrepreneur, fashion designer. One more. Child of God. <laughs> Sir. Bro. I love when people want to be identified as that because that really is the foundation. Right. Like being a child of God is the foundation to everything else. Right. So I want to get into this. You have a Christian clothing brand. Yeah. And it's called Revival. Revival. Yeah. It's actually that, crazy like how I, how I got into it. That's what I want to know. Yeah. Tell us about it. So like obviously walking in faith is kind of like a, it's a weird thing. Sometimes you're asking to hear God's voice. Right. And then what faith really is, is evidence that things aren't seen. So you really just ha kind of have to take that step. Yeah. Um, but this time I actually heard God's voice. He was like, I was like, God, is revival something you want me to get into? If, if it's not, you know, <laughs> take like, it away. I'm, I'm cool. I don't yeah. want to do it right. Um, and so after, I think I was at like a young adult service or something. Yeah. And um, after, I'm like, all right, God, send me a sign. And so I get in the car. And the first thing that plays on like my Apple Music that hooked up to the Bluetooth was, I think, Lord Sin Revival. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, let's, let's go for the ride. I'm ready. Um, and really, it's just been a, a crazy, like, roller coaster of emotions, of mm. events, of learning, of, I want to say, I don't want to say failing, I'll say learning. Mm. Yeah. Say learning. Yeah. Um, whenever you're, because God put me into a place where I wasn't really sculpted for it in, in some aspects. Yes, yeah. like, creatively, yes. Right. Um, and just being like a designer and just having like a mind and an eye for um, things that look good. Yeah. But like in a business sense, it's, if it looks good, but you don't have the audience to sell to, it's just going to sit mm. there, you know? So um, it's been a lot of learning. A lot yeah. Of learning. Yeah. I mean, I think anytime you're a creator in general, you're always learning. Right. You're learning your mistakes. You're learning, you know what I'm saying, what works, what doesn't work. Right. And that's why I said to you, even behind the scenes, like, bro, be patient with yourself. Right. Give yourself grace right. because you're going to make mistakes, but that's how you learn. That's how right. you grow. Right. So I wanted to ask you this question. How did you create as a kid? Because you're a creative uh, person. Yeah. Even the way that he dressed, bro, right. like, y'all don't even know. Like, bro is whole creative from head to toe, but... <laughs> I know as a kid, you had to be a creative type right, of kid. Right. How did you create? Um, it's a funny story. Like, I always always think about this, but nobody like ever knows. Okay. Um, we always had, well, like a lot of, every, mostly everyone in my family is pretty creative, whether it's music, yeah. drawing. My mom's like an artist. She draws and did stuff, but hasn't in forever. Wow. Um, but when I'd run out of paper, I would literally like, I was just a kid. I was like four or five years old. Um, and then closest thing to paper was like toilet paper or something. So I like literally <laughs> would draw real light wow. on toilet paper yeah. just because it was like that was, I didn't have no regular paper to draw on or yep. nothing or sketch. So that was the next best thing. And she never, never yelled at me, never took mm. it away. She just let me, you know, grow and do what I was a kid, you know? See, man, this is what I'm saying. Like whenever you're in a certain like place in life and this could be rich poor doesn't matter right. but whenever you are lacking and you're slightly in poverty especially like the black community right. it's like we'll find ways to be creative right whether it's on toilet paper whether it's on right. a wall right. you know what i'm saying like, it sounds funny but that's real like <laughs> yeah if, if like you, i don't know as a kid you just don't see it as that you know yeah not as a kid all you see is magic right all you see is the creativity right you're not worried about you know what i'm saying the the details of it. Right, all. exactly. So I wanted to ask you about your childhood. Right. Like, when it comes to your childhood, I know that we all have had traumas, issues, right. and a lot of it we're still dealing with now as adults. Right. What are some things that you went through as a kid that you find yourself still processing as an adult? 
probably, I think the biggest thing is breaking generational divorce in my family and learning how to maintain like wow. real, like we'll never be able to comp like comprehend yeah. a love like God. Like I was thinking about it, I was like, we'll never fully understand like the love God has for us. And stepping into my faith and just like getting to know Jesus more, it's like he like literally like 110% loves me. You know, like mm. through it all, good, bad, ugly, um, and with my family, it's just been a lot of like premarital kids, and now kids growing up with moms and dads, and that, like you know that that yeah. leaves a lot of scars and yeah. trauma, um, and so just trying to be the first one to break that, and like mm. actually, you know, get down on one knee and propose to like the girl that I love and that I know like God has for me, yeah. Um, and so trying to break through that and trying to like actually become more self-aware and being like, all right, what are these things in me that is prohibiting like growth or the kind of marriage that I want to see? Mm. You know, and you kind of, it, it's a lot of maturity um, and a lot of time and a lot of growth to like actually ask yourself those questions yeah. and then answer those questions with action. Yeah. You know? So I, lo I, uh, I, I love <laughs> what you're saying because people look at marriage from different lenses, right? right? And the fact that you're trying to break that generational curse means that you're called to a life of service. Right. Because marriage is really just about dying service. to yourself. Right. It's really about serving and yeah. dying. And a lot of people end up in divorce because they're not willing to serve. And you got to be willing to serve the person you're married to, right. your kids. Right. Like you become the ultimate server. Right. You feel me? Yeah. So I mean, Chris Rock, sorry to cut you off, but no, Chris Rock, ahead. he was like in a special and he was like, when you're in a relationship, you are in the service industry. Come you know, on. How can I serve you? How can you serve me? Yep. And when I'm serving you, yep. you'll be taken care of. And if you serve me, I'm taken care of. So, you know, mm. you don't really got to worry about. Serving. And that's what I'm saying. It's always reciprocal. Right. Like, if you're serving somebody else, they should automatically be in return doing right. that. But sometimes it doesn't come right. through the people who you want to serve right. that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they're not meant for you. Dang, bro. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're not meant for you. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a big sign. Yeah. So, here's a sign for you. Yeah. If you're serving somebody and, and you're. They're not serving you. Come on. Get out of here. They got to go. They're <laughs> they cut. Gotta go. They're cut. They it's cut. Go. And it's, it might be it's hard. a wrap. And the crazy thing is, yeah. a lot of that comes from like, God, I want this person to be mm. in my life and like trying to force somebody into wow. your life who's not meant for you. And that happens a lot with like, it's hard to date as a Christian. Yeah. Why it's do you hard. say that? It's just like, it's not, it's hard to find people who are really in their faith. Yeah. You know, without them like idolizing marriage and yep. trying to get married in three months. Just to you know? say, like, right. God bless me, I'm married. Right, right. You're right. Um, wow. So it's like, wow. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. And a lot of heartbreaks come from us trying to like mold people into like, oh, come to church with me. Yep. Oh, you might like it. Oh, yep. like, and trying to yeah. fall in love with potential. You know, mm, trying to fall in love with potential. This is why, man. Like for me, I understand it's hard to date as a Christian because right. whenever you're so fo focused on a kingdom, right. you don't want to be distracted. Right. And then whenever somebody comes, it's like, are you a distraction right. or are you sent from God? Right. And then sometimes it's a distraction. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, it can be difficult. But I wanted to ask you about your teenage life or your mm. childhood a little bit more about being in boarding school. Yeah. Cause not everybody oh, goes to yeah. boarding school, bro. Yeah. Like to me, it was growing like some up, real Zoe one on one. Zoe one on one, bro. Like yeah. yes, exactly. Yeah. So was that your experience, or what was it like? So I went to an all boys boarding school. Okay. Cause I knew I knew myself well enough to be like, all right, girls are gonna be a distraction, especially right. living on campus. When I was right. like, I can't, I can't do that. Um, so quickly, like debrief on like how I got to there. Yeah. I was in a um a scholar program. Okay. So with that, you do like a three week boarding school experience. Okay. Um, and so you live there on a campus with other people, co-ed. Right. Um, you have your dorm. You know, you got classes in the morning. You got, like, extracurriculars after that. Yeah. Um, and then you go on to Saturday school. So I had school, like, six days a week. That's so weak. I like, don't like school, Yeah, right? like, 12 or 13. You're a beast. Right. So it was, it was <laughs> hard, bro. It was hard, hard. Especially with, like, sports, too, because I was a wrestler. So two hours of wrestling every day after school. Then Saturday school. I had homework on top of homework. Um, and then you're interviewing different schools so you meet with like the headmaster or yeah. whoever's in charge of like admissions and at 13 I'm having interviews over Skype because my parents couldn't drive me all the way to like these schools and stuff wow. so I'm there with you feel me shirt and tie with like shorts on the bottom because they can't see me yeah but uh um yeah <laughs> was was, you, so boarding school was a choice for you yeah you wanted it was a to choice go. yeah were you away from your parents that whole time um 
For the Saturday part, no. It was okay. we went to like a little branch campus that was like twenty five minutes away. Okay, um, that's not on, bad. Yeah, depending on where you live, you get a certain branch okay. uh, school to go to. Um, and so then you get, go through like the whole admission process and get yeah. accepted and um, interviewing and financial aid, all that stuff. I always thought that if you go to boarding school, it's kind of like your parents are too busy to raise you. So they put mm -hmm. you in boarding school to basically let school raise you. Mm -hmm. And then I also knew, I also used to think that like sometimes it's a choice. Right. And there's uh, certain beneficial things and right, scholarships right, right. and different things you can have right. in boarding school. Right. So everybody's experience is different. Right. And the fact yeah. you said you was right there next to your parents, it's like, okay. And it, it helps me yeah. and the audience see boarding school in a different right, way. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, it was a it was a wild experience, but I moved <laughs> away like six and a half hours at thirteen. You feel me? And it was it's really not like your parents like it. Tre they treat you like college. You know, yeah, your first that's what day I'm there, say. Okay. they treat you like college. Um, and I had to wear coat and tie every day, um, except for Saturday Sunday. But coat and tie every day, classes from like eight to three, sports mandatory for like freshmen and sophomores, juniors, um, and it really. It's more of like a social experiment. Like, how do you react to like yeah. this independence? Um, was and that, it grew me a lot. Like, I was already pretty much sure. My parents always saw like something I was like different. Yeah. But um, that really like it set me up really well for college and independence. And you know, it's all on you at that yeah. point. Really I think God me. does that. Like in my childhood, my parents were very busy and they did stuff. Okay. So I kind of raised myself, right? Right, right, right? But I believe that God does that on purpose to cultivate right. your character, right. to develop you because yeah. you're a leader. Right. You're and he, knew, he knew you could handle it. Exactly. Right. And he knew that he had a whole mission behind it. Right. So I wanted to talk about you're from New Jersey. Yeah, Jersey so, boy. you know what I'm saying? You're a Jersey boy. So whenever you are in like, you know what I mean, PA or whatever, what do you find to be different? Like the culture wise. <laughs> right. Um. Oh, it's just different. Like back home, you could you could go to the corner store yeah. at like ten and get a sandwich for like five dollars. Yeah, you feel me? And you go to the corner store and you're like, "Mommy, poppy, you, that's what you call them." Yep. Um, you got like ten different styles of food that you could choose from at any yeah. point. Um, the train station's right there. Go up to New York. Yeah. Or like you would go up to New York when you're oh, bored. Yeah. You know, like just just regular. If you don't have nothing to do, um, a lot of different cultures. I know Pittsburgh's pretty diverse, but. A lot of different cultures. Um, yeah, that's what I was saying. We different. gotta step our food game up. Like in Pittsburgh, right. we gotta step right. it up because right. when I travel, they be having food so. Right. Bro, they be having a yeah. different nationality. Yeah, all y'all gotta people. do pierogies out here. I gotta, I gotta do something different, man. You gotta step <laughs> it up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The Pittsburgh sandwiches, all that. Yeah. We gotta step it up. So I wanted to ask you, bro. You're an entrepreneur. And everybody doesn't have the opportunity or have the strength to be an entrepreneur right. because you have to endure. Right. What is your experience right. like being an entrepreneur? Oh, what can man. you tell the people to like encourage them? Uh, you got to be real strong in your vision. Like stand mm. firm in it. And if God gave you a vision, walk in it and just know that like whether things are, you really got to weather the storm. That's the best way I can mm. put it. Um, and finding peace in it and Putting God as your number. If I didn't put God in my number, there was there was moments where like, literally, God told me quit my job mm. and dive fully into like art. Yep. Um, and what I was I was doing, and there was a point where the side hustles I was trying to do to make money wasn't really doing it. Yeah. And I was dipping into savings and other money, and it was just I was See? like, all right, I don't know what to do, God. What do you want me to do? Um, and sometimes He won't speak, and yep. you just have to move. And it was at a point where like, yo, bro, I'm broke, like nothing. And it's at a point where, like, I'm walking around my apartment praying, like, yo, God, I know you gave me a vision. What's going on? Like, send help, SOS, you know, like, something, something's got to give. And I'm waiting. I'm, like, it's kind of like I'm, like, waiting for one of those things where, like, you look up from your phone and you just see, like, all these sales or all these, like. Yeah. And that's, it just wasn't the case. And that happens for a very, like, few people. But um, when God really wants to mold you and build you, yeah. he's going to put you through some stuff that's really going to touch your faith. And that's, you basically told people if you're an entrepreneur, just endure, go through the motions. Right. But I want to point out the fact that you said sometimes God doesn't speak. Mm -mm. And then you have to deal with that. So right. here's a word of encouragement right. that I have for people when you feel like God isn't speaking to you. Right. 
go back to the last thing that God told you to do and just do that. Right. Like continue to do what you know God told you to do before right. until he speaks again. Because, right. bro, what I found out is a lot of times God's not speaking because you're not doing the last right. thing he told you to do. Right. He's like, I already you're, spoke. You're up here and he's back here. Yeah, it's, it's like, bro, moving. I already told you yeah. what to do. You're not doing it. So, therefore, right. I'm going to wait until you act on what I told right. you. It's kind of like it reminds me. I always think about like when... uh was it Peter who went out in a boat and like yeah. threw his net and nothing was there and then Jesus would like try to do it on the other side. Facts. And so it's Facts. like what I got from that was try it on, do it, cast mm. your net on the other side. You know, if it's not working this way, try it another way. And also yep. like it's everything is temporary. Your pain is temporary. Your success is temporary. Mm. Um, pain may endure for a night, but joy comes after this. Come on. Come on. Like, Come that, on, scriptures. That's real. That's real. Let's go. That's but, real. But, bro. That's what I be trying to tell people, like, God plays such a significant part in your business. Right. Some people compartmentalize God. They only put him in church, in right. the building, or in areas that they feel like they need help right. in. Or just seeing him as, like, a miracle worker. Come on. But, like, he's a father. And, like, mm. as a dad, like, a dad's love is, like, a hard love. Yes. Sometimes, like, tough love. Tough, um, tough he love, might yeah. leave you in that situation until you move, you know, and then he's like, all right, you've learned. You've learned your lesson. Wow. You know, and I learned, I unfortunately, had to learn a hard lesson. But, you know, like, looking back, if I never would have went through that, yeah. it's crazy to say, like, I survived it. And I'm at, I was, yep. like, at the point of, like, almost losing a lot of stuff. Yeah. You know, I lost yeah. a lot at that point. I'm like, yo, what can get worse? You know, like, is it can it get any worse than this? I'm like, can um, it get any worse than this? Yeah. Dang. That's like a, yeah. it's like a low-key rock bottom when you're right. like, no, rock can it bottom. get any worse than right. this? Right. But one thing you told me or told the audience is that God is a father. Father. And a father only allows for you to be down for a certain period of time until he comes and he nurtures you and he picks you back up. Right. And you have to really get, but a lot of people, bro, they didn't have a father. Right. So they're not able to see God in that way. Right. So you have to go back to the basics. This is why therapy is a big thing. Mm -hmm. This is why just spending time with God alone is a yeah, big thing. Yeah, yourself, knowing yourself. Come on. Dating yourself. Dating yourself. Dating yourself. Come on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I throw, like, a lot of the times I throw in some headphones, go to the mall, get yep. something to eat. Yeah. You know. Go to the park, write in a journal. Journaling yeah. is a big thing. You can't be scared to be by yourself. A yeah. lot a lot of times you're in the wrong relationships because you're yeah. scared to be by yourself. Yeah. But you got to go back to your father, God. Mm -hmm. And, bro, I wanted to ask you, what role did Jesus play in your life as far as cultivating your ideas, your right. mindsets, all of it? Um, it's actually funny. So I grew up, my dad was Muslim. Okay. So he grew up, I grew up in, like, a Muslim household, but never really, like, it was, like, lukewarm. Yeah. If anything. Um they didn't and practice so, or anything. My dad did, but not, okay. my, not my family, really. Um, and so I went to college, Geneva College, because I, I had this um, preconceived notion of, about, like, Christians. Like, oh, wow. they all sin. Like, lukewarm. I just thought they were all lukewarm. Oh, they're, like, they think they're better than everyone. They don't think that they sin, mm -hmm. whatever, and just, like, saying one thing but doing another. Come um, on. And that was kind of my experience from um, people I had been around. Um, and so when I went to Geneva... I remember one day, because we had, like, mandatory uh, chapel on Wednesdays, and I was just like, all right, God, like, to whoever God was at that point, I was like, does it, uh, you know, calm my heart, like, open up my heart to what's going on, and just, you know, um, and so I started um, becoming more curious, yeah. you know, and then I backslid really hard when I dropped out, yeah. um, just into, like, a lot of, like, stuff I shouldn't have been getting into, but it was yeah. pivotal to, like, where I'm at now. I was going to ask you this. You know. Whenever it comes to backsliding, so if you're not familiar with the word backsliding, it just means whenever you're in God and you're doing what's right and then all of a sudden you make mistakes, you fall, right. a lot of times it's condemnation right. because you make one mistake, you feel like I might as well keep making them. Mm -hmm. And then the devil comes in and he grabs you and right. he drags you through the right. mud. But whenever you come out of that place, bro, talk to the people about right. how they can come out of a place like that. Um, I think thinking about what freedom really is. Come on, freedom. Freedom, freedom really ain't free. You know, like it comes at a cost. Um, and a lot of the times when you're backsliding or doing things that like, oh, I'm living my best life. Are you really? Or are you like, you're free enough to, you know, have sex and drink and then you become addicted to sex and Come on. drinking Come on. substances and all this stuff. And then you're not free because you're bound Dear. to a lot of stuff. Bro. So it's, you're not, you're not free as you think you are. So how do you get free after you've done all that stuff and you're bound? Um, just really, I mean, you got to get to the place where like you're being real with yourself mm -hmm. and just asking God to come back into your life, Yeah. you know, and um, asking for forgiveness and finding mm -hmm. grace for yourself to be like, 
all right, what are the next steps yep. to like actually living in freedom? And the the truest freedom you'll ever find is is God. It really is, and He'll tell you who you are and who you're not. Um, and that's the only voice that you need. Because if He tells you, if He told me who I am, who are you to tell me who I am? If, regardless of what you did, what you did isn't who you are. Right. And I feel like a lot of times whenever people do sin, whether it's smoking, drinking, having sex, lying, right. stealing, killing, everything that you can do, the enemy tries to identify you as right. that. But that's not who you are. You're right. a child of God. Right. And the more time you spend with God, he reminds you yeah, of who you are. Exactly. And then those things fall off of you and you stand in the right position. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? That's I love God so much, bro, because he. The, one of my favorite things about God is that He's able to take something bad and turn it around yeah, for, good. for good. But yeah. this is the other part. He makes it so good that you don't even regret the bad stuff you right. did. You're thankful right. for Use it. Use it as a testimony for Come on, And bro. that's how, like, a lot of people become, like, too churchy yeah. and too religious. Yep. And it's like, yo, if I never went through this stuff, yep. first of all, like, God has told us to commission people and to, like, make disciples of everybody. Right. And it's like, if I never went through what I went through, how can I save somebody who, I, who like, can't relate to me? Yep. You know, not me saving somebody, but no, how can God, like, yep. how can I show somebody God if I can't relate? If I'm just, like, beating them over the head with a Bible, oh, yeah, bro, like, God loves you. Okay, but why? Like, they don't right. understand why, Right. you know? Um, and a lot of it comes to do with, like, shame and just, like, me personally, like, nobody around me at the time when I was, like, getting interested in God could really relate to me Yeah. in a way because they're just, like, t so, like, into their faith that they forget that, like, they're human, you know? Bro. God has been having me focus so much on the humanity aspect of life. And he's been saying, as much as I enjoy the spiritual things you do, I right. enjoy the humanity part. I right. created that too. Right. Just the walking, the talking, right. the laughing, the dancing. Right. He's like, it doesn't have to be always, you know what I'm saying, so mm -hmm. spiritual. I love the humanity part. Right. But I want to play a game, bro. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So this game is called Word Recognition. Okay. Now, the way that you play it is, I'm going to say a word, oh, which I don't know is my brother's like a low-key rapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we pulling him out of his shell. He's going to yeah. perform today for y'all. Yeah. This is the first time that he's performing on the camera live. Right. So this is, you know what I'm saying, an exclusive drip. But I'm going to give you a word. Okay. You're going to rap freestyle <laughs> something with this word in the freestyle. Oh, yeah. You ready? Yeah. So this is Word Recognition, the freestyle edition. All right. You feel me? All right. So the first word is... Create. Bluetooth disconnected. Create. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, man. The first word is create. <laughs> I might need to create. God gave me the gate. The devil, I'm going to have to skate. Bluetooth hey. connected. Uh, I'm going to be running late. Hey. Because <laughs> uh, I already accepted my fate. Hey. Being a child of God's my trait. Trait, hey. And he gave me a clean slate. Slate, That's mad, hey. like, churchy. That's a bad churchy. Okay, like, okay. Like, right there, but, Okay, like, no, it's cool, know. bro. You I was trying not to, like, listen. be too worldly. And <laughs> listen, bro. beeping out, so. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, bro. You just spoke from the heart. Right. All right, so the next word is move. Move. Yeah. I might have to take a move. You know the vibe is truth. Uh, uh. Spin hot fire in the booth. Hey. Uh, hey. Uh, I'm gonna put gold on my tooth. Hey. 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 Bling. Hey. 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 That's all I got for that. <laughs> <laughs> I just see like the smell where it's like ching. You show your tooth right. like the yeah, yeah. You feel me? Now look, you wanna get that like single tooth grill for real? Yeah, that's hard. They're I hard. mess with it. I mess yeah. with it. Okay. So the last word is Jesus. Jesus. Whew. Better believe us. Uh, only thing that can please us. Mm. Please don't tease us with mm. that worldly stuff. We need it. Uh, mm. Better believe it. Leave it. Or you gonna leave it. Leave uh, it. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's all I got. Mm. Everybody see it. Hey. hey. <laughs> now you go. <laughs> nah. Nah, now you go because you put me on the spot. Now. <laughs> hey, man, listen. I do be freestyling. Like, you know that. Behind yeah. the scenes, I be doing all of yeah. it. All right, but okay. So I wanted to ask you, bro, growing up and even now, who are some of your musical influences right. that kind of develop your sound and, you know what I'm saying, your vibe? <laughs> um, I was like obsessed with Jay Z growing up, bro. I thought you were like the best. I messed with Jay Z rapper. too for a minute until yeah. I start getting into, you know what I'm saying? But I messed right. with Jay Z too because he is lyrical. Right. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Old Kanye. Okay. Old Kanye, like Heartless. Yeah. Stronger, Graduation. Hey. Homecoming. Oh, Homecoming is tough. Yeah. Homecoming is tough. Yeah. Um, now I've been getting into like a lot of like UK rap because a lot of it's like ever since I got into drumming and like trying to play the keys and like yeah. learning about that stuff. 
um, the more you appreciate like real raw sounds. So, like mm -hmm. a lot of them are starting to rap over like just piano, mm -hmm. which is tough. Um, so like Stormzy, yep. Berwin, Dave, yeah, tough. Um, yeah, so. You were telling me that, like behind the scenes when I was talking to bro, you were telling me about your influences in the UK right. and the differences as far as America sounds and right. UK sounds. And yeah. I love the African instrumentation mm. and all the different breakdowns right. that it just feels raw, feels authentic. Right. And you have some music that you're going to be dropping, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So this is exclusive. Y'all going to hear it, so stick around. Yeah. So a lot, but, of, a lot of the music that I want to start doing is mm -hmm. like revolved on, around like keys mm -hmm. and just like lo-fi beats and stuff that like where the... The beat becomes like second to like what's what's being yeah. said because they're really like on hip hop, not rap, and exactly. so they're telling stories and like being like authentic and stuff. So, I love that. Yeah. So another thing, bro, is that you're launching and you launched before your clothing brand, mm -hmm. this revival. Yeah. Like, tell us about it. Like, how can the people get it? Tell us about the new launch. Like, just put us yeah. into it. So, um, I got my site up, revivalclothingco.com. Okay. Um, everything's on there. Worked real hard to get it up there. Come on. Um, if you know somebody who's good at like web development, you yeah. know, definitely you want your site to look as professional as possible. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, my new hoodies are dropping. I got sweatpants dropping soon. Um, some t-shirts coming like springtime. Okay. You know, so I'm okay. trying to fit the, fit the weather. Okay. Um, and I really want to get into some DIY, like sewing stuff and like really mm. like step into that, you know, because blanks are cool and like screen printing is cool and all that. Um, for like buying wholesale stuff, but I think like I really step into step into that when um like sewing stuff and cutting things out and putting them together. Okay, uh, what would you tell like a teenager or somebody young who wants to start something but they're so blinded by fear they don't feel mm -hmm. like they can do it? What would you say like look into the camera one of them and just tell them yeah. what you would tell them? Um, what's the worst that could happen? The worst that could happen is you know, it doesn't lift off like you want it to. Wow. The best thing that could happen is you grow in your faith, you grow in God, and you're touching lives and changing things around you that you never thought, you know, could have happened. So, mm. I mean, it's just trust the process. Enjoy the journey. It's really about the journey. Um, and, you know, because that small fraction of, like, success, like, where you're at, like, where you end up, is like that's that's all okay now i'm like shipping out orders now i'm dropping music now people want to listen to my music that's right. cool but like what happened to like when you were at rock bottom or when like what was fueling you yeah. you know and what got you to that point so that's that's what's mostly important that's what's really like you're going to remember at the end of the day um I love, so, yeah. bro, so I respect that because one thing that I always believe is that God, when you have a relationship with him, he'll keep reminding you of your vision. So even if you're running or you're fearful of it, when you're spending time with God, he won't let you just be dormant. He'll right. keep pushing you, right? right? And another thing is, it's okay to make mistakes, right? right? And then the last thing that I'll say is, like, Nike, just do it. Like, yeah, just, just do it. Just do it. Just do it. You know what I mean? Like, while you're young and, and like, we all think we have so much time. Yep. You don't have... Bro, one don't. thing I definitely wanted to bring up. You said success is temporary. Yeah. You spend all this time trying to get success, but then success is only temporary, and then it doesn't even feed you the way that you thought it would. Right. And this is why I say when you do what God wants you to do, mm -hmm. it, feeds, it you, feeds you, and on top of that, you're successful. It's like a bad product. Right. Okay, so I'm about to do a speed course of some questions, like three. You ready? Uh, yeah. You just got to answer them very shortly. I got you. All right, last time you cried. Oh... Almost today, I was listening to a worship song. I think wow. would fit in. Wow. Almost, almost today, so I didn't cry. But it was probably a couple months ago or something. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, one thing you wish to accomplish before you die. Oh. Uh, one thing I wish to accomplish. Um, show my family that anything is possible. And, like, mm -hmm. don't live by the motto like it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that becomes, like, complacent. That gets you complacent. Okay. What you would tell the 15-year-old version of yourself? You're not where you thought you would be. <laughs> You're not where you thought you would be. I had this big vision of like, or like I planned everything out. All right, I'm going right. to do this by this time. This didn't happen. Mm. The last thing, if you can ask God any question, what would you ask him? Uh, oh, man, that's tough. Um, oh, man, that's really tough. It's I had to ask God one question. I guess uh, 
to be real, because I like to, like, I expect a lot from people, so I have to expect a lot from myself. Yeah. Like, what are things in me that I need to, that, like, you need to refine, that I need to give up? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Search me, O oh God, and tell me the yeah. things. Lead me in a way everlasting. So, what are your words of wisdom? I always like to close the show up with that. Uh, like I said, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy bro. the journey. Learn as much as you can. Do as much as you can. Travel as much as you can. Um, put down a phone. Like, be, like, listen to good music. Yeah. Like, real, real music. Come on. Um, uh, try different things, for it. It's just not, mm -hmm. there's not just one thing in you. And that's what I've been learning, like, yeah. throughout this whole thing. Like, even though I started Revival, all right, I don't have just one brand in me. Mm -hmm. And I know that. And so, um, more stuff is on the way. More stuff is on the way. Yeah. And when I was talking to you, bro, and I was telling you different things and saying things, you're like, bro, like, you have a ability to pull things out of people. You see things in people and you pull it out. And I think it's because we're so multi-layered. Like right. you just said, there's so many things in you that needs to be pulled out. So you can't be afraid to make mistakes, right. travel, right. and put your phone down, be present. Like mm. sometimes you're on your phone so much, you're not yeah. even present, enjoying the, right. the life that you're watching. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, we live so much in the future. Like, all right, what Ooh. am I doing tonight? Yep. You don't even, like... What are you about to do right now? What are you doing right now? No, yeah. Forget about what you're going to do next year, this year, what you're going to do, you know what I'm saying, in the future. What are you doing right now? Right. What are you doing right now, bro? Like, what are you doing right now, sis? Like, wake up. You know wake what I'm up. saying? Yeah. Okay. So, y'all know what my words of wisdom is. I said every single show. And make sure you stick around. My bro's going to perform yeah, something. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I say this every single show because it's just so dynamic and it's so true and it's so relevant. It's always right now. It's time, find freedom. It's time. Find God. Let's yes, go. God. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, this is why I love my show so Damn. much. I'm so appreciative to God. I'm so appreciative to the journey. I thank you so much, bro, for just sliding through the freedom experience, allowing it. us to capture your story, yeah. but also just shine light on your businesses. Right. Make sure y'all grab the hoodies, the t-shirts. You bring something today? Yeah. Oh, you got it on you? Like, right? Yeah, I got Let's it on out you. there? Yeah. Oh, man. Like, I wish you had it on it's you, right. bro. Y'all don't see. It's a surprise now. It's a surprise. Okay. Said, yeah. But make sure, man, y'all tap on my bro, all his music, everything you're doing, bro. I just speak love, I speak healing, I speak blessings over your life, mm -hmm. and I just, you know what I'm saying, trust in God for your future, that everything that is written about you, it, it comes forth and springs forth into reality Thank on you. earth. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you so, having me. Yeah. And yeah. I'm going to keep a lookout and keep oversight, making sure you, you know what I'm saying, keep pushing you. Yeah. But uh, stick around, man, because my bro is about to perform, and y'all already know, when the Freedom Experience, you know what I'm saying, the performers, they perform. <laughs> Let's go. All right, y'all. Oh, yeah, Please. like, uh, comment, subscribe, subscribe. right? Subscribe. Tell them, tell them, bro. Like, comment, subscribe. Come on, man. You already know the deal. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> <laughs> that was fire. What's up, family? It's Jibs. I'm right back at it with the Freedom Experience, man. I wrote some last night, some light for y'all. I hope y'all enjoy it. Let's get it. I've been in this place before. Stuck up in a house with no place to go. And just living off of a four for four. Poem weak faith in the Holy Ghost. Funny how love's the only pain we know. And fake friends is the only place we go. I'm so tired. Living my life over fire. Got no air in the tires. And liars saying I'm a liar. The face don't match the attire. Cutthroat flow, I'm the wire. And bingo it, I'm the sire. I'm the next up. Tell your boy he gotta get his flex up. Cause the devil will try to get you wet up. I'ma keep shooting from the neck up. Till I see him in a stretcher The money is how they will get you Been claiming you a big stepper I met you You got shook when you felt the pressure I learned young life will never let up And keep a youngin' down till you get up Money is the only way to measure How rich you are or your treasure Trials and success are tethered A bad dog will smile when you pet her Air with flow, I'm fresher Than any given blade on the ceiling Fan, so go ahead and tell your middle Man, that I'm the next thing that's stepping And boss so hot, I need a kettle And a tablespoon of butter in a searing pan I'm popping Death is the only time I'm stopping Who lied and said I was flopping Made a mess of yourself and I mopped it But tell me what the numbers I'm blocking Did overtime shit the clock in Let's go